your heart and loose the song inside. Oh, let us rejoice, let us magnify His name. Oh, Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. We're gathered in this place to honor you. Worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we are here. We're here for you. Oh, we're here for you. Come on, let's break out in praise. We'll break out in praise. Let your shout arise, for our God redeemed us with his mighty power. Oh, let's sing together, let us magnify his name. Break out, break out in praise, let your shout arise. For our God redeemed us with his mighty power. So let's sing together, let us magnify his name. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. Oh, we're gathered in this place to honor you. To worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we are here. We're here for you. Jesus, we are here. We're here for you. And we're gathered in this place to honor you. We'll worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we are here. We're here for you. We're here for you. Oh, we're here for you. Oh, let's just turn our eyes, turn our eyes to him tonight. our eyes to the heavens where does our help come from our help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth oh we lift our eyes to you God we lift our eyes to you Jesus it's all because of you Jesus we lift our eyes to you thank you Jesus I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to the Lord. And I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. darkness falls, it won't prevail. The 
Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, oh, oh my God will never fail. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the Jesus, every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story ends. Let's sing that again with a little bit of swagger in our voice. Here we go. There's power. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story ends. Oh, I know, I know. expecting victory tonight. Everyone say victory. Uh, victory's got to be on our lips. Hallelujah. In our heart and on our lips. Praise the Lord. And so uh, th three things I want to talk about at first is the website, emails, and texting plan that we've put in place now. With uh, emails, it's important to know, and I say this every month for 13 years, <laughs> basically, go to the website touchingtoronto.com. All right. We need to do that. If you want to find out about the itinerary, any other information, there's videos on there. But most importantly, for those that are not on our email list and you want to be on our email list, you can subscribe right there. It's done legally, it's done quickly, efficiently, and uh, you're signed up. So if you forget and you go home tonight and say, oh yeah, touchingtoronto.com, turn to your neighbor and say, touchingtoronto.com. <laughs> okay, all the info's there, you've got it. And no more problems with the emails. Glory to God. I sent out uh, a thousand, over a thousand emails twice in the past week. How many did receive those emails? Okay, praise the Lord. How many didn't receive those emails? Uh oh, now, now we're going to have an altar call for liars. Hallelujah. <laughs> but, anyways, we just wanted, 
everything we're trying to put in place is to help you, to serve you. And so by having the website there, again, all the information's there. If you forget, you can go there to touchingtoronto.com and subscribe at any time. Secondly, with those emails, if you can't, for whatever reason, do that, and you want to be on our email list, then we're going to pass out some cards tonight. The usher's going to pass them out in a moment, not just yet. And just print your name really clear and your email address. Again, we get some of these cards filled in, and if there's one letter, one digit wrong, you're not getting into the system. So if you're not receiving the emails and you filled out a card last month, that is most likely the reason why you didn't get my emails. So you're getting another opportunity. Again, the best way, most efficient way is just go to the website and, uh, and go ahead and subscribe. It takes you less than a minute. If you can't, again, for whatever reason, fill in the cards tonight when we pass them in and we'll pick it up during the offering. And finally, the third thing I want to talk about here is our new texting platform. Again, we're, we're putting the money and Steve's put it up there in the, the overhead. You text the word JOIN to that number. Write down that number and text the word JOIN and you'll automatically be subscribed to the texting platform. Again, we're only going to use this for really like emergency or last minute things. There may be the odd other text, but it's primarily to, to serve you. So those that are traveling from hours away or even provinces away, we want to give you early notification. And the text, as you know, everyone's, most people have a cell phone. We text it, and you get an alert right away. So if you're halfway on your way to the, uh, to the crusade, and all of a sudden you get a text from us, well, we're trying to save you a lot of time and money and hassle, all right? Because if we have to cancel a meeting because weather, our uh, flight, Pastor Billy's flight is uh, delayed, again, we want to inform you as quick as we can. Now, we've told people, always check your emails before you leave because that's the other way uh, that will inform you, okay? So anytime you're coming to a meeting, check the email, see if you've got an email from us, a last-minute change. If you're on the texting program, again, write that down now, and you can do it tonight, you can do it tomorrow, but uh, we want to provide you with that just to give you a heads up if there's any last-minute changes. Everyone say changes. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so we got all that, those three things. Uh, finally, uh, did I mention about the thousand, yes, yeah, thousands plus, I mentioned that already, right? That uh, only 300 people opened them. So that's the last thing I want to mention about the emails again. That means that 750 people or so are not opening up their emails. Say, so uh-oh. I'm not looking at anybody. I'm just saying, uh-oh. <laughs> All right. So that means the ball's in your court. We can't do anything more there to help you, assist you in that. It's up to you. Check your junk and spam folders. Again, if you're not getting the emails the last two weeks, it's up to you to subscribe. And going forward, you'll be on our list. It's automatic. All right. Everyone say praise the Lord. All good news. All right. Um, let's look at the, um, uh, well, let's move on to this. No children's ministry. No recording or photos in the building. This is our meeting. We don't want flyers from other uh, organizations that going out. This is our meeting, and we want you to be blessed here tonight. We don't want any distractions. So, again, no children's ministry, no recording or photos. Turn your cell phone off. Okay, how many need to turn their cell phone off? Go right ahead and turn your cell or mute it. Either way, you don't want to be standing there in the middle of the service, and all of a sudden, oh, there goes my phone. Everyone looks at you. So, uh, I suggest you mute your phone right now. Uh, ministry time when Pastor Billy starts the minister. And, uh, James, is this mic working yet? So maybe, oh, there you go. Okay, praise the Lord. I'll continue with this one. Thank you. During the ministry time, for those who are here, especially for the first time, Pastor Billy ministers by the Holy Spirit. So it's not like you come and you line up a prayer line. That could happen. Anything could happen. <laughs> All right. But it's, everything is subject to change by the Holy Ghost. And Pastor Billy's going to start calling out certain sicknesses and diseases, whatever. He may just start, start, you know, start coming right down the aisle and start praying for people. That's all part of this whole thing as he's led by the Holy Spirit. But if he starts calling out sicknesses and diseases, you go to the far side, the left, the right side, line up, come down here, and there'll be people to assist you. The ladies with the microphones will be here. And uh, that's both sides. So don't come running up the aisle. If he's praying for a few people now, don't get in the aisle. Let him come to you. Let the Holy Spirit, through him, come to you. Everyone say, I got it. Yeah. All right, praise the Lord. That helps the flow with us and the ushers. We're all just trying to flow to serve you. We see, we see God operating through Pastor Billy. 
This is like 13 years now. So we're in our 13th year, and we've seen many, many miracles. So tonight's your night to receive your miracle. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I think I got most of my announcements out of the way. Yeah. Uh, no. Video, Steve. Here we go. Next meeting right back here. Okay, ushers, let's pass out those cards. I almost forgot. If you want a card for your email address, we prefer, again, you do it automatically. Put your hand up, and the ushers will bring you a card. And please print clearly, not in tongues, in English. All right. Print it real clear, and we'll add, as long as I can read it, as long as we can read the information, we'll put you into the system this week. All right, anyone else need a card? Keep your hands up. The ushers coming back. All right, let's stand to our feet over here, uh, guys. Okay, you got it. Okay. Let's stand to our feet. Let's worship the Lord. Let's prepare your heart for victory tonight. Prepare your heart for victory tonight. Amen. Victory on your limbs tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We give you glory tonight, Lord. We give you glory tonight, oh God. You are so worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. And you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness.
Jesus, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, you're the way maker. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, that's my Jesus. That is who you are. 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 Oh. And great is thy.
have it all, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Oh, you're worthy, you're worthy, worthy of it all. Jesus, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory.
Let's go. It's impossible. Come on. Not a thing. It's impossible. In. Now hearken to the voice of Is there anything Well In And Is I Everything Come on everything Possible Come on, somebody give him a shout. I said give him a shout. Come on, give him a shout. Let's put our hands up all over the place tonight. Let's really, really press in. Let's press in with every ounce of faith that we have. The Holy Spirit is here and He hears us. He waits to hear you instruct Him so He then can instruct you. He wants to know that you need Him. The greatest thing you can ever say to God is, I need you. I haven't outgrown you. I haven't gotten too smart for you. I don't know the Bible that well that I don't need you. I don't have such a good church that it's replaced you. He don't put you in a good church with a good pastor or give you all the knowledge, scripturally even, to replace him. The greatest luxury we have, the greatest luxury that we have is to hear God from the inside out. Such a price was paid for that. Come on, say, I have ears to hear. I have an inner ear to hear. The ear of the Spirit. And I'm open tonight to hear God speak to me. About this or that. About them or those. About here or over there. And everything in between. I'm here to hear. I'm walking out of here tonight. Hearing. An instruction to do for God. Come on, give him a mighty shout. Come on. Wow. Come on, move around, give some people a hug, and tell them tonight is the night of miracles. Tell them. Yes, yes, yes. I'm probably going to need a lot of water tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Come on. Let's have a seat here tonight. Just so you know, my voice is, is uh, been stretched beyond measure meetings every night over the past probably two weeks and being on different television networks and helping some was on Daystar was on uh, Kenneth Copeland and so we're we're busy screaming and yelling I, I only say that to say this if I thought that I was carrying anything besides the anointing I would never be here to uh, give you my germs okay <laughs> even my germs can heal you though I'll tell you that right now <laughs> <clears throat> hey, what about last night? <laughs> now, I'm going to give you something to pray about and something to think about. We, we had lunch today, Pastor Brian, Pastor David, and myself, and we were just talking about last night and, and planning some other stuff for the future. You know, and we gave the indication last night that after November... Then we take a break for December, January, and February. <laughs> anyhow, anyhow, we probably will skip December and, and February. 
But we kind of came to a conclusion, if there's an interest, what would possibly, possibly needs to be arranged, we need to find the right facility, that sometime in the beginning of the new year, wait, just wait, we'd like to have an anointing service. And that means where we would have bowls of oil, and that means where we would, you know, we'd worship, we'd share a message, but then we would really focus the whole evening on just getting that oil on you for the new year. Now, the only thing about that that I would say is you want to make sure you wear clothes that night that doesn't mind oil stains. Okay, so no blue jeans or hoodies, though. None of that stuff. No, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> Whatever you want to wear that you don't think would hurt your nice clothes because that oil can get all over you. I've done a few meetings like that with crowds as high as eight or 9,000 people where we anointed all of those people. And by the end of the evening, you're just putting your hand in a bowl and touching people, you know. <laughs> and you're ready to drop over and touch yourself with oil, you know. <laughs> And it's quite amazing. It's quite amazing whenever you add other dimensions of the anointing to you. And somehow we all grow to a point where we don't think we need a seatbelt. We don't even think we need to stop at stop signs. You know, we don't even think we need to say excuse me after a big long spaghetti burp at the table. Come on, say amen. <laughs> No, it's amazing how you begin to disregard small things. And remember, small hinges open up big doors. And, and the Holy Spirit's very, very sensitive to these small issues. You know, he likes thank you, praise you, I, I need you. I'm getting back to that point. And you could be coming here with the best of intentions. And it's, it's, not, it's not what I perceive, it's what he perceives. You know, he could very easily perceive that you have come to a place in your Christian walk where you just don't think you need him. You know, and you're just, that you just carry that. You just hear him and you read the Bible and you know your favorite songs and you come to a meeting and, and all of a sudden, one, somewhere down the road, you get into a real Red Sea, an entrapment. And you find out there's, there's more fear there than faith. What's that mean? It means all along the way, you really didn't build that bridge of needing him. And that's why it's important because we don't know when those Red Sea moments come. It could be a health issue, a money issue, a marriage issue. It could be a terror attack issue. It could be anything. Because what the pandemic proved was a lot of Christians had more fear than faith. And we don't want that to happen again. And so so we want to we get a good litmus test of where you are. And it's best if you do it because if somebody else does it, then, then you feel they're condemning you or judging you. You know, the Bible says examine yourselves so that he wouldn't have to. And you know, you know how much fear there was of just touching somebody. Or you got mad at somebody if they sneezed at you at the bank or... You know, something, it was just crazy stuff, but it, it was real. It was real, and then you had to wash your hands, and then you touched him. You had to wash your hands seven times in one day. Come on, somebody. And all of that, and I get it. I understand that. But in this time as we go forward, let's practice needing him. <laughs> Come on, say practice needing him. Practice. Just because you're saved, just because you're born again, spirit-filled, and you know some scripture, and you've had a couple healings under your belt, don't mean that you don't need him. Right. See, preachers learn how to preach. Then they don't need to go backstage and say, I need the anointing. And singers learn how to sing. And they don't have to go back there and say, I need, and Barbara Streisand, I don't believe she's a practicing believer. She don't have to ask God for help. She don't have to go back and say, oh, God, help me tonight. She has, some, she has confidence in herself, confidence in her voice. And a lot of people get confidence in their skill set. They get confidence in their job. They get confidence in their marriage. 
You know, and it's very, very important that, you know, you realize you're not an easy person to live with. <laughs> that person that lives with you is, is there by the grace of God. Come on, somebody. <laughs> right? And I tell you, it's really, really powerful every once in a while to let your wife or your husband know. Because the word love is kind of worn out. It doesn't mean what it's supposed to mean. And, but when you throw those words, you know, I just want you to know I need you. There's something about that that's just like, whoa. Because, you know, sometimes we grow independent. I don't need my parents. I don't, need, I, don't need, I don't even need my job. I don't even need Canada. I mean, can I go somewhere else and live? And you begin to grow so independent. I don't need vitamins. I don't need a seatbelt. I don't even need to say any prayers before I go to sleep. I go to bed saved, wake up saved, I'm just saved. And boy, you become devil's food. You become an easy object to attack. Because what he sees is there's no on all the time communication. He sees the lines have been cut. And you're living off of yesterday. Or better, worse, you're living off of last year. Or worse, you're living off five years ago. Or worse, you're living off something that somebody told you. Once a Jew, always a Jew. Once a Catholic, always a Catholic. Once a Baptist, always a Baptist. There's none of us here tonight that doesn't need him. Doesn't need him. Come on, somebody give God a shout. And, and if you begin to humble ourselves and add that, those few words to whenever you say, I love you, Lord. Well, we say, I love you, Lord, and I love chocolate cake. <laughs> you know, I love my car. I love, I love this time of the year. I love, I love, we throw that word around where it doesn't even mean as much as we think it does. But whenever you say, Lord, I, I, I need you, not crisis, not every time you're in a crisis. Oh, Lord, I need you now. He, he wants you to appreciate him and knowing that you need him for your next breath. You know, you need him to just get all of your food on the table. You know, and, and we get letters all the time. I don't know why you do that. I don't need him to do that. I need him, I need him for the big stuff. Well, the big stuff is breathing. Last time I checked, if you're not breathing, nothing else matters. See, and, and it's important that when you leave a meeting like this where God was doing some miracles last night, people say to me, well, how's come I was healed there, but I, it left me three days later because you didn't act like you needed them. You thought you got it, and now I don't need them. I got it, and I don't need them. I, I went and got my car fixed. Now I don't need the garage. I got my tooth out. Now I don't need the dentist. I got my new shoes, so I don't need to go to the shoe store. That's not the way God works. He said, if you abide in me, come on, if you stay in the vine, if you stay plugged in, if you stay consistent, if you, if you abide in me, you can get to a place where you ask anything, you know, within accordance of the scriptures, reasonably. He said, I'll make sure you get it. That's right. But he don't like when you act like you don't need him and don't talk to him, don't express your need for him, and you just show up in church. And to you, that is top shelf showing up and God says well thank you very much I don't know what I'd have done if you hadn't showed up <laughs> right and sometimes that's all the preacher cares about that and the offering come on say amen <laughs> not the preachers here but a lot of churches everywhere that's, they care they care about you your name on the roll the money you give the, the class that you work but God's different he saved you from a devil's hell you know, he's really saved you from the land of the damned and the doomed, uh, from eternal separation. And he thinks that's pretty, pretty costly because we can't buy your way there. And it's more than just you getting to heaven. I mean, day to day here, we need him. Now, I don't want to ever get Alzheimer's. I don't want to assume that I won't. But I don't want to, I don't want to ever get, I've had it twice. I've had stage four cancer twice as a boy, as a man. I don't want to go around the third time. That's right. But I don't want to assume that wouldn't happen. I can't get careless with my Christianity. He's with me, man. The man's with me. You see, a lot of this stuff, 
There's a lot of people that they're real good at talking like that, but their lives are messed up. And they really can't help anybody down the path of faith. You know, because they all they, they just assume. They just assume. And, you know, when you live in New York City, or I'm sure here in Toronto or L.A., some of these places that I'm very aware of, you don't assume that your doors are locked at night. You know, you go lock all seven locks. Come on, somebody say, <laughs> you go lock all seven locks and the chain, you know. And you make sure it's checked, that's checked, that's checked, that's checked. You know, when I, I fly so much, these pilots, they spend a lot of time sitting in that cockpit, checking cockpit, looking over everything, checking things off, looking at charts, who flew the plane before me, doing as much as they can to make sure. They don't assume, well, the plane landed here from the last pilot. It had enough fuel from there. No, they just going over everything because lives are at stake. Your life's at stake. I mean, the devil's after every person on this planet That's right. in some way, shape, or fashion. He's after people. He's a roaring, lying, seeking whom he may. He don't care how he does it. He don't care if he takes you out mentally or physically or emotionally. And how many people are walking around today emotionally dead? If it wasn't for a ball game, they wouldn't even have any emotion. They go to a ball game or to a bingo thing just to make sure they still have something to say. Bingo! <laughs> Home run! Way to go! But if a lot of those people didn't have a team to cheer for, their lives are very boring. Their lives are average. Because that's, that's why these stadiums pack out. That's why the country music packs its place out in Nashville. That's why people love America's Got Talent. They have not much to cheer about in their own life. So they sit in an audience. They cheer about these people that get on top of one another and, and, and stand on their heads and hands and, and do all kinds of feats. And they just, there comes that emotion. They don't have it for their own life. That stuff that you have is meant for you. It's meant for you to be so above and beyond thrilled about that God is not meeting your needs. He's exceeding all expectations. Come on. Come on, somebody help me here. I mean, you want to be able to get up in the morning and just say, man, I feel good. I'm alive. This leg here is hurting a little bit, but I'm alive. I'm a little hurt by what that lady said to me last night, but man, I'm alive. You know, where you're strong enough on the inside to shake off some of these stupid things. They get people sideways and quit church, quit loving people, you know, quit worshiping. Because a, a couple little things got stuck in your drain. And you just don't, you just can't handle imperfection. Well, if you can't handle imperfection, do not look in the mirror. Do not look <laughs> in the mirror. Because you're liable to pass out right there. And that, <laughs> You got, you know, so it's, it's important that you, I can't say this enough. Why? It's epidemic. People today need their phone more than they need God. They need that phone. And if you ask somebody, what would you do if you lost your phone, your flip phone, your iPhone? Oh, oh my, oh my God, don't say that. Please don't say those words. I don't know what I would do. This phone is my, oh. And then they say, I have it backed up on the cloud, just in case, just in case. It's all backed up. It means more than it should. There's a few people here, like myself, you're old enough to remember the phone booth. How many is old enough to remember the phone booth? Boy, that's cheap from where I came from. But you, you, remember, you remember a time, and if you watch enough television, you remember the time when they rolled the phone and, and had to hear, and how communication has changed. And now we've all gotten spoiled, you know, to this, this massive, massive, where we really, we have an addiction to electronics, you know, and we, we need that phone. And I just said it, we need that phone 
And God does not want to be replaced by a phone. Not by a talking, computerized woman. Come on, can you say amen to that? <laughs> and, and it's important that you kind of put that in your life where it belongs. Because you'd never want God to say, talk back to you and say, well, you talk to Myrtle all the time. Let Myrtle heal you. <laughs> you need money. That's Myrtle where to get some money. Because that's, you, you express your need in the time of need. Don't wait till you get into a crisis. Don't wait till something goes awry in your family. And then you start screaming out to a God you never talked to. And then, then you come to a meeting like this. And then you're putting all the marbles on a meeting like this, all of your faith. And that, that too can be dangerous. We want to help you every way. That's why we have these meetings. This girl that was here last night with that cancer, I don't know if she's here tonight or not. I don't see her. What a story that was. Somebody, come on, give God a big shout. Come on. But I was actually driving. I was in Pittsburgh, and I was driving down a, a highway there. It was a pretty busy highway. And I was just doing my normal worship. I was worshiping, singing. And, and I was saying things like, Lord, I just love you so much. Oh, I, Holy Spirit, I adore you. I love you, Jesus. I was really... And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, why do, you, why do you love me so much? And it so threw me. I thought, well, what do you mean? What do I, I mean, you saved me. You forgave me. You know, I just started saying everything I could think of. You saved me. You forgave me. And he said, pull the car over. And I heard him from inside, from inside. I pulled the car over. He said, tell me why you love me. Well, you went to the cross. I mean, you, you know, you provide my needs. You, I just went on down. He said, tell me why you love me. And I sat there maybe 15 minutes, and I knew that I was missing the mark. I knew I wasn't saying what he wanted to hear. A lot of you wives don't hear what you want to hear. A lot of you husbands don't say what you need to say. The question. And then these words came out of my mouth, and I just, they just came out. He said, why do you love me, Billy? I said, well, I guess I need you. <clears throat> Bingo. Wow. He said, that's exactly right. He said, I need you to know that. Don't ever get too anointed for me. Don't ever know too much knowledge. Don't think you can do these meetings without me. Don't ever think you can forgive people on your own. You don't love that many people. Come on, say amen. You don't. <laughs> Come, somebody help me. I know that sounds strange. He said, you know, you and I both know that your forgiveness comes by a grace that I give you to forgive. You want to forgive, so I give you the tools to forgive. But whenever you feel like you don't need to forgive because you, you, you think you've gotten somewhere where, you don't, where you're really not, then he said, then there's going to there's gonna be issues. I pray for a lot of people that have quit talking to him for years. And then they come to a meeting like this, and they just like they're, they have an entitlement to miracles because they've been saved for 30 years, you know, or they got healed 30 years ago. They used to read their Bible today. They don't. They, there's this sense of, an, I've been a Christian since. I've been speaking in tongues for 50 years. And, and they come to the meeting, and they find it hard to receive. Why? You quit needing him. Somebody told you and all you need now is vitamins, organic food. All you need now is just to remember the, the, the heritage you have. I mean, you come from a long line of people that really lived long. That's no guarantee for you. I'd be afraid to put my faith in a, in a, in a lineage of people that lived in their 90s or 100s, whatever. Because I can tell you a lot of those people I see die, 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 die. Why? Their faith was in their lineage. Their faith was in, I come from a, an Arab, a Aborigine Indians. You know, we live long. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, who teaches these people this stuff? <laughs> who teaches people this stuff? People die from all ages, all walks of life. The movie stars, the National Football League people. Former healing evangelists, some of the best that has ever walked this earth, pa passed away in their 30s, their 40s, their 50s. 
you know, I, I could name them, you would know who they are. But I'm saying that it's, it's somewhere along the line, we quit needing him. And that's the problem. And then one day you realize, I can't get to there from here on my own. I can never make enough money to do what I'd like to do. I don't have enough money medically for my children or college. You know, my wife needs a car, and I have one, but she needs one, and we just can't do it. I mean, on and on the list goes. And he said, I'll provide all, all of your needs according to my riches. But that's got to stay real in you, though. There's a lot of things we know. From the, it's like, you know, you crash, you crash studying to pass a test. Remember the college days? You stayed up for three nights and had a little extra juice to help you stay up for three days. And, and you passed the test, but you remember nothing. <laughs> you remember nothing. All I know is, thank God I got a B plus and I'm happy with the B plus. <laughs> but you remember nothing. You can't pass anything on because you just studied to pass. You just studied to get healed. You just studied to get out of the jam. Let me tell you about life, as far as I can see it. There's jams ahead of you that you can't come. And if it's not your jam, it's your children's. If it's not your children's jam, it's the grandchildren. If it's not their jam, it's somebody really special in your church. And you go to pray for them, and the desire to pray for them is not even there. And this is the person that you loved every Sunday. Every Sunday, you just you see them, you get used to them, and then you hear something happen, and you say, oh, I, and you're thinking, I should be praying for him, and I'm not. I don't even desire to pray for him. And you think, what's wrong? So you say to your wife, honey, make sure we pray for him. What that means to her is, I guess I got to pray for him. Because she's also realizing that you have cut that line of communication. And sometimes we're more alone than what we know. Meanwhile, there's an enemy that's stalking you. The sharks aren't far behind the shrimp boat. They're not far behind the surfers. I've surfed a lot in my day, and if I, if I knew then what I know now, I never would have surfed in my life. <laughs> I, I thought I was just chasing a wave. I was running from sharks. Didn't even know it. Those bumps you get in the leg and you know that fin you see and someone says, don't worry, that's just a dolphin. Yeah. Dolphin don't have teeth like that. Come on, somebody. Dolphin, <laughs> dolphin don't have teeth like that. And we really, we just, we just move on our own. And we die before our time. And we suffer needlessly with things that we shouldn't be suffering with. So when you, when you see a lot of people and you, you want to say, well, why? I don't get it. Why is all these Christians suffering? Well, they may be a Christian, but that don't mean they're a constantly in touch Christian who recognizes their need for their master. There's a lot of independent Christians that are out there. I'm happy they're Christians. I mean, I'm happy that, that they made that commitment. But sometimes we make a commitment, then we say to God, eh, I can take it from here. My name's in the book. We're good. You know, I can take it from here. I can handle all the parking tickets. I can handle all the surgeries. I can handle my credit card debt. And pretty soon you find that what's killing people is stress. That's where the heart attacks come from. And the blood pressure, and the anger, and the suicides. One meeting, we had so many suicides, I, it just shook me. I said, oh, God, I left the crusade. And I said, there had to be a couple dozen suicides there. He said, that's only the ones you know about. That's the only ones that admitted it. I said, what's causing this? Is it the drugs? Is it the... He said, no, Billy, they quit needing me. Remember what I said last night? Sometimes Jesus has to be invited. He's not going to always crash into your party or crash into your need. There's a few places in the Bible where he showed up on his own. He came walking on the water in their storm. He walked through the wall to Thomas' negative attitude. There's places where he just showed up, but there's a lot of places he didn't show up. And he was waiting for them to pray, waiting for them to need him. I know you love him tonight. You wouldn't be here. 
You know, I know you need something or you wouldn't be here. But it, 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 I'm just a man with skin on who he uses. But he wants your faith to grow where you don't have to see him. I mean, you can talk to him, the invisible God, the immortal, only wise, irrefutable, invisible God. Somebody give God a shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But, but it's, it's what you're saying when you do meet him. Did you ever think what you would say if you meant a certain person that you always wanted to meet? Boy, if I met him, I'd just forget words. I'd just give him the biggest kiss he's ever had in his life. You know, I'd grab him by the neck and hug. I'd take him home. I'll tell you that right now. You know, and we, we say crazy things like that. We just do because we don't have words to say what we would do if we ever met somebody in person. I don't know if I told you a story about my mother meeting uh, Engelbert Humperdinck for the first time. And she was always an Engelbert Humperdinck fan. And uh, you know, she would listen to his uh, records and so forth. And, and so before she passed away, she was in her late 80s, late 80s. And I saw that he was coming to Pittsburgh. And I said, I'm going to take my mom. She's never seen him. I'm going to treat her and take her to see Engelbert. And uh, so I've got the tickets. And my wife and I, we flew into Pittsburgh. And, she was all excited, and I said, Mom, you're going to see Engelbert, first time in your whole life. And she said, oh, I can't wait to go see Engelbert, and this is such a, a blessing for you to do this. I said, oh, Mom, don't worry about it. So we, and we, I thought we had pretty good seats. We were underneath the first balcony. place was packed out, and he comes out, you know, and does start singing his songs. And uh, my mother says, Billy, get me close. I, I, I can't see him so good. Get him close. Get me close. I said, Mom, these are the only seats we're allowed to have. She said, Billy, do a miracle. Just do a miracle. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, my God. I couldn't believe she said that. She knows better than that. I said, Mom, it don't work like that. You know, we'll say a prayer. Mom, Mom, this is our seats. She said, well, I'm not enjoying this. I'm just not enjoying Oh, Lord. I said, well, I'm going to go down and see if I can get you down front. I said, would you go down front? I'm going to try and get you to meet him. I didn't know what I was talking about. I was just trying to calm her down from being unhappy with her seat. So I just did wait here. So I went down to the front. Place was jammed. He's up there singing, please release me, let me go. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'd like to get out of here myself right about now. <laughs> and I went down to, I talked to the guard. I said, guard, I said, I'm Billy Burke. You know, I live in this certain town. I said, I do meetings here in Pittsburgh. I help people. I was just trying to think of anything I could say. I said, is there any way I can bring my mother down? She's in her late 80s, and she's never met him. He said, well, we can't do that, sir. High security. I said, oh, sir, you just don't understand what this is. No, sir, we cannot do that. And I just thought, oh, man, this is, where's my favorite when you need it? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I started to walk away, and he said to me, hey, hey, just a minute. Get your mother and get her down. It's got to be quick. I said, all oh, right. So I went back and got mom. I brought mom down. People were watching me. I brought her right down to the stage, to the stage. And the stage was pretty high, so you had to put your hands up on the stage. And she's a little shorter than I am. And so I took her down there, and I said, Mom. So he's on the other end of the stage, and he's singing his heart out. And he's singing all those hit songs. And my mother's over here going, oh, my God, oh, Come over here. Come on, Engelbert. I'm going to kiss you. Come on over here. I'm going to. She said, Billy, if he gets close, I'm going to grab him. I'll tell you right now. I said, oh, my God. So here he comes. He just walks over casually. And there's my mother. He, and he stands right in front of my mother, right in front of her with his feet. I'm looking up at him. And he's singing one of his songs. And my mother leans over and she says, Billy, take me back to my seat now. Like angry. I said, Mom, settle down. Take me back now. I'm done. I thought, oh, my God. And I said, what, what happened here that I didn't see? I said, you okay? You feel okay? She said, take me back or I'm going back myself. I said, whoa. So I, I took her back and I got her along, along the side of the theater. I said, are you okay? She said, he looks different. <laughs>
<laughs> Gave it to a woman, I'll tell you that right now. I, and I knew what she meant. I mean, I mean, we all, if you keep a picture of your high school graduation, we all look different, right? And, and I said, Mom, I know, but that was still him. She said, and I just, I just didn't, I didn't care to see him. That just did it for me. She said, I'm ready to go home. I said, let's not go home. Let's just, you know, let's just stay here. I want you to enjoy the moment. She said, I'm done. I'm done. I've seen him. I'm done. In other words, she didn't need him anymore. And see, our God never changes. He never changes. He heals you when you have faith. He heals you when you don't have any faith. He'll heal you out of faith. He'll heal you out of mercy. Everybody he healed in the Bible was not even a Christian. He hadn't been to the cross yet, and he's healing people. Their sins were still in them, and yet he still healed them. See, the love of God is something we don't comprehend here. We try to think of everything, and what's blocking my healing? What's stopping me? And there's always somebody... Some lay person or some preacher is going to tell you it's probably something that you're doing. And, it, it, and it's really not that at all. It's your ability to really express that you need them. But I wouldn't wait till you have something wrong to do that. Begin to express you need them now. And he'll help you pass a test. He'll help you learn where the money is to get the taxes, to pay for your taxes. He told Peter, go catch a fish, and then there'll be money in the fish's mouth to pay your taxes. He doesn't operate naturally only. See, when you, before you're born again, he speaks to you from the outside in. He speaks to your mind. He speaks to your heart. He speaks to you. He speaks to you through people. But the luxury of being born again he comes on the inside. You begin to hear his voice on the inside. It's an amazing thing. But he usually, whenever you're asking him for something, he, he just doesn't say, okay, when do you want it? What time? When that, Monday night? Monday night, Toronto? Peter, Paul, and Mary place? Is that what you want it tonight? He's not Uber Eats. Come on, somebody. He's not Uber Eats. <laughs> He wants to hear, and he just don't hear your words. The power of words is great, but he likes to hear what's in those words. Are you sincere? Do you really mean like you need him? When people say they need their phone, they act like it. I mean, their emotions show up. Their words show up. Their money shows up. You know, whenever you go, you know, when you need new nails, come on, you got to get some nails. <laughs> got to get some nails. Man, that smell, that, those places where the nails are, they'll kill you. If you stay in those places in a nail salon for an hour, you'll come out high or drunk or stoned or something. <laughs> it just drives you crazy. And man, but these women, they go in there and they just, hallelujah. And they're in there for an hour, two hours, three hours, just so they get, they need that. And we all need stuff like that. And we express it. But we don't express that same need for him. I've had some professional athletes call me with injuries. You know, they, they weren't be able to gonna play. And they said, I come to get healed, and we'll get you healed. And do you need him to heal you? Oh, I do. Have you told him that? I'm only a go-between. I'm not God can't heal anybody. But I can introduce you to a, the, the guy that does miracles. But he, he wants you to believe and he wants you to need him. Some of the most famous boxers that ever boxed have come to our meetings and said, you know, I just, I got this. I, I want to be able to go the distance, but, but do you need them? And they look at you like you're crazy. Or what do you mean? I, look, see my muscles? See how long I've trained? I've been working a long time. I've been in the Olympics. I'm an Olympic champion. I'm just ready for this. I'm just, I'm, I'm good to go, really. And there's people that step into all kinds of occupations. They go down in submarines. They go down in shark cages. They go up in capsules to the moon with never expressing, I need you. Trusting in technology. Trusting in oxygen tanks. 
There's so many things we put our trust in, and then something when it breaks down, you didn't need him. These people in the Bible that saw, saw these great feats, before they got in the lion's den, Daniel said, I need you so much, I'm going to be praying. You know, these people, they needed God. What has, in this, in our culture today, technology and modernization, the information highway, I mean, I can get on my phone, I don't know if I have it here or not. I do, I do have my phone. I can get on my phone right now and say, how old was Paul Newman when he died? I didn't say, I hope I didn't, hope that don't answer right now. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, Kenneth E. Hagen, how many books did he write? That's crazy. That's crazy to be able to do that. To be driving the wrong way and, and for this to come on and say, make a U-turn at the next light. <laughs> and we're so used to it. No wonder you need this. No wonder you need this. But this can't tell you whether to get surgery or not. This can't tell you whether to take chemotherapy or not. AI is not going to be able to do that. AI is going to help a lot, but it's not going to be able to give you every answer. Every answer is him. The Bible says we have an unction from on high who knows all things. AI couldn't even be given to us if he didn't filter it to be given to him. Everything we do know comes from him anyhow. But we don't give him the credit for it. We give somebody who invented it the credit for it. So all these telltale signs are signs that we're growing independent, growing independent. That's how evil begins to spread. That's how cancer gets into your house. That's how bad things happen to good people. When you quit needing your wife, you quit needing your husband, and there's always someone around the corner that's going to be more attractive, more wealthy, more, more, you know, more interesting, if that's the word. And, and that's why so many people, when they do have a third person, they say, I don't understand. I love my wife. You, you do love her, but you didn't need her. You didn't need her. She raised your kids. You needed her to raise your kids, but now you don't need her. <coughs> That's why all of the sexcapades are taking place in convalescent homes. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's stuff that all over the world in, in these convalescent assisted living places. Oh, my. It's epidemic. These people get turned on at, at late in life. They can hardly walk, breathe, and see. Come on, somebody, but <laughs> say this. They have a need. I've talked to people that own these places in big cities, and they, have, they, they all put their motel keys, their room keys, into a bag. And they pick a key out. And a lot of these places, not some of them, a lot of them, because of a need, not love, a need. Tonight, it's very, very important to, to God. That's why he has me sharing this. I like to come in. I'm not here just to sing and, and touch some people. I want to give you knowledge is power. And I, and I just don't know that I just don't know that sometimes that we really want him with our healing. We want a healing but without him. And he's such a key to how you get healed and how long it's going to take to get healed and how much how soon he can intervene. I tell people, boy, if you're here and you're really desperate and you really are after, after God to heal you, be open for those details. Because they're the, that, those details in the healing, after the prayers, after you've been in a meeting like this, he wants to sensitize you. I mean, we've seen people get healed, get pregnant. You know, one lady came in, she had a stage four cancer. And she said, I, I'm so afraid of... Uh, chemotherapy, so I don't want chemotherapy. So they offered me radiation. I said, well, here's what I want you to do. And I'm hearing for her. She could hear this, but she don't want to take time to hear that. So that's why I'm here, to hear for her. I said, so the next time you get radiation, she said, I haven't gotten it yet. I said, good. I said, radiation is, is heat. Cancer cannot grow in heat. 
So doctors know that cancer cannot grow in heat. So that's why they now radiate to use heat to see if that, and sometimes it will work on certain cancers. I said, but when you start getting this first shot of radiation, I want you to say to yourself out loud while they're doing it, right while they're doing it, this isn't radiation, this is the fire of God. Come on, somebody, come on, come on, come on. And she says, what do you mean? I said, just, just don't buy into the whole radiation thing. Radiation by itself has no power, except in very minute situations. But when that heat starts to hit your body, I want you just to check out and say, man, this is the fire of God touching me, the fire of God. She did that. She only had to have one treatment. Come on, come on, come on. Had another lady, I prayed for her on a Sunday night. She had nine gallstones, nine gallstones over here. I forget which side my gallbladder's on. Nine stones, and she came. She was under the power for an hour. She went home that night as she told me the story. And she said, I was so touched by the power that went through me, but I, I found out when I got home, I was still painting. And I didn't know what to do. If I, was, if I was healed, why would I still be painting? Sometimes you get touched in a meeting not to be healed, but to hear the voice. So you can obey that voice and get the healing. See, God doesn't want, doesn't want to do all the work for us. He wants to put your faith into action. She's laying in bed, and, and she hears a voice, not outside, inside. That inside voice. And that inside voice said, go down to your refrigerator. And, and he, she went down to the refrigerator. She said, I was so desperate. I was so desperate, Brother Bill. There's the answer. I was just so desperate. People aren't desperate enough today. A lot of them aren't desperate. So she said, I went down to the refrigerator, opened it up, and this voice said to me from inside, take a little bit of everything in here, a little bit of that leftover hot dog and a little bit of that relish, a little bit of that mustard, a little bit of that meatloaf you can't stand. Come on, somebody. and Take a little bit of everything and stick it in the blender. Everything. I said, everything? She said, everything in my refrigerator. A little bit of everything. And she said, and I put it in the blender. She said, I almost gagged as I was putting this in the blender. I drank this. And she said, every stone in 24 hours was dissolved. Every stone. Now, so I said, give me, a th every, give me a list of everything you had in that refrigerator. I'm going to make some money right here off of this lady. But it wasn't that. She needed and she heard. So you're not going to really hear until you know I need you. That's why people go over the bridge, kill themselves, shoot themselves. It's because they have no one to listen to them. They have no one to, that they need that much that can help them. Sometimes you need all the wrong people. You know, you need your alcoholic friends. You think you do. You know, pimps need their, you know, their johns. They think they do. I said, the one prostitute in New York, I said, why, why do you think you do this? She said, Billy, I need it. You need what? Do I need the money? I said, it's not the money you do this. There's a void in you. There's a vacuum in you. It's not the money. You were raised better than this. I told her some stuff. She said, how would you know this? I said, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit right now. I said, you do this because you're empty. You're empty. You've watched too many Lifetime movies. You've watched... You know, people with perfect hair and perfect teeth and a fantastic Christmas tree. Come on, say amen. <laughs> I said, you're needing all the wrong people. You need abusers. You need people that, I said, no, let's stop this. But she said, I don't know how to need the Lord. Let me help you with that. And we began to go through a process. And boy, she figured out really quick, who's really there for you? That's what makes people angry. When you go to church with everybody, you know everybody, but yet you know nobody. 
You know, you love everybody so much, but you wouldn't let any of them borrow your car. I'm coming over here. Somebody's going to throw a stone at me over there. <laughs> you, you, know, you, you know what I mean? You love all those people so much, but you wouldn't bring that homeless man into your house to cook him the food. So we, we don't like to go too far thinking about that because it reveals shallow. It doesn't reveal deep. It reveals shallow. And then when it reveals shallow, then you think, oh, God's not going to help me. God will heal you when you're shallow. He's not here. He's, he knows we can't get deep right away. Look, say this out loud with me. It takes a long time, a long time. For, me for me to get rid of me. He knows when he comes into you, he's not first place. That's why he's so amazing. He knows you're consumed with you. Yet he comes into you and says, come on, tell me what you need. But somewhere along the line, he wants you to catch on. That now that he's met so many of your needs, you really now need him. He's healed you from this. He saved you from that. Got you out of jail early. Brought you through that surgery. You know, touched people in your family. Actually, how many people here would really even, should even be alive in this room? How many people should not be alive? Let me see. I should not be alive today. Uh, we're not completely honest, but that's all right. How many? One more time. How many? All oh, the hands are going up now. There you go. See, see, that is like I wouldn't be here except for you didn't eat right. You didn't drink right. You didn't forgive right. You hardly went to church, and you very rarely prayed. You know, I mean, and yet you're here. That's a, that's a miracle. But God wants you to break that and say, come on, I want you to need me. More than you need that iPhone. More than, a, more than a prostitute needs her pimp. More than, and just go down that line. More than those news anchors need that station for their job. Some of them are leaving because they're saying, you know what? I don't need you to take away my faith. We're living in very interesting times. And, it's, and we're going to all need the Lord more. We're going to have to get closer. to. He said, you draw close to me and I'll draw close to you. So tonight, and I'd like you to begin this. I'd like, I'd like to see this group here in Toronto grow a little. We'll see way more mirror. If we don't do this, what's going to happen here, when, what's happens in a lot of other places we go on a regular basis? I don't want to see that pattern here. What's that pattern? All the new people get healed. But the people that are coming just keep coming because they like the music or they like the the spirit, they like the flow of the meetings, but they keep their arthritis, they keep their blind eye because they don't, they don't pick up the fact that I need him more than I need the preacher. I, I, I need him more than I need these meetings. I, I need him more than I need my church. I need him way more than I need let's make a deal. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm serious. He knows what your staples are. You can't fool him. He knows because he sees our actions. So there's got to be some cooperation here at this state that we're at because, listen to me, I don't know how long your lifespan is, but let me tell you something. People are shocked at what they had to face later on. Nobody plans on losing your mind. Nobody plans on not knowing the people that are around you. Nobody plans on that. You'd be crazy to plan on that. I just had one of my good friends in high school, I mean, and his wife was in her 50s, in her 50s, and just, boom, went blank one day. Nobody plans on that. You know, we all have fire extinguishers we don't know how to use and guns we don't know how to load. Come on, somebody help me here. But you just like having it. And that fire thing was your, you just, it just makes you feel good. I hope to God you never have to use it though. 
Because you can't hold a fire extinguisher in front of a fire and say, I got an extinguisher. <laughs> the the very bare bottom basics for a believer in this hour, the bare bottom basics is that you realize that this Savior that you've invited in, you need him. You're not that smart. You're not that talented. Listen to me. And none of us are that good. And we're not all doing everything the way things are supposed to be done. The number one question I get from people that are dying of a disease, here's what they ask me. I don't have the answer. Here's what they ask me. How did this happen to me? I, 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 I'm a member here. I gave so much money last year. God uses me to help people. I bet some of the top shelf evangelists come to our crusades that later passed. And they were just riding that reputation of I'm a preacher. I'm a famous preacher. A lot of you should know what I'm talking about because it's happening to people all around you. How many are shocked about some of the people that you've lost over the past few years? Let me see. How many are shocked? Some people you expect to go, what, they're 103. Come on, somebody, help me. So it don't shake you that much, but whenever people begin to disappear, and the way they disappear, their health just falls apart. Their mind just goes. Or their morals go. You forgot to need him. He's here to give you living water. He's here to heal your body. He's here to give you peace. He's here to deliver you from anything that has a hold of you. And he can, I mean, he can set you free faster than you can. Mm. Right. I had a lady come up in Tampa this past weekend, and she said, I need delivered. I said, from what? And she told me, and she said, I just got to get this out of me. She said, it's in me, and I got to get it out of me. I can't stop it. I, I, I honored that, and he honored that because she recognized she couldn't get it out. I said, I can't get that out, but let's go to the one that can. Boy, in seconds, she fell to her knees. Those things came out of her, and she went home a free lady. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. Come on, come on. I, I, mean, I mean, we have no trouble needing AAA. We have no trouble in calling people for road service. You have no trouble taking your, your computer down to the geek squad. Because why, why do you not? Because you don't know how to do it. You don't know how to do the geek squad thing. You don't know how to do the car thing. So you admit, I got to take it to somebody that knows more than me. Who's going to help your troubled soul? It's hard to get people to even listen to you. I dare you this week at church, after church, say, hey, can we get together for dinner? Most people are going to say, we're going to have to do that. Yes, we're going to. You know what? I, I, I'll talk to my wife. I'll be back at you. I'll send you a text. I'll send you a pigeon with a little note wrapped around his feet. <laughs> and we all blow it off. But we say, boy, people really, people are busy. And, and, and people, it's not that they don't want to be with you. People are genuinely going five different ways. But there's one person, if he knows that you really believe that you need him, if you can humble yourself, I need you. If a brain surgeon can say, I need you in this surgery. If a preacher can say behind the stage, I need you tonight. It makes all the difference in the world. I know how to box. You know, I'm in shape. I'm a great boxer, but master, tonight I, I need you in that ring. I don't know why I'm afraid tonight, but tonight I'm afraid. And I, I need you. Mm -hmm. I've been on a plane that was going down. I've been on a couple planes. We were on a jet coming out of England, coming over, crossing right over um, up there by Greenland, coming back. We had to take another route. I later talked to the pilot because I thought, what happened? And we hit wind shear at 35,000 feet. 
when the plane just, it just did what planes do when they hit wind shear at a high level. And it began to, just began to drop. And I'm thinking, I'm not at Disney. I'm not at a Disneyland ride right now. I'm on a jumbo jet that's headed the other way. And you could hear the stuff's falling out of the plane. People are screaming. Some are cursing. Some are calling on God. And in that moment, I, all I could do is what I know how to do. Is, Lord, I really need you right now. Yeah. Forget about all these people, but save me. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't do that. <laughs> but see, that's where it counts. Why? Why? Because God knows who is faithful. Well done, thou good and a tender. Well done, that good and faithful singer. No, well, good, thou faithful servant. Faithful. Practice, practice in the light so if dark should come, you, you, have, a, you have a habit. I need you, Lord. Oh, I need you, Lord. And some people that express the need for the Lord, they're considered wackos. Christians that are just all whacked out. Oh, what's she need him for? She's rehearsing. That's why you buy insurance. You buy insurance because you, just in case. You buy automo insurance, homeowners, fire. If you're, if you're a professional, professional liability. I mean, you insure your, Liberace insured his hands. There's people, if you knew some of the stuff they insured, you'd, I, you, you would flip out. I just did a, a, a study on that one time. I could not believe some of the people. It's crazy. Why do you do that just in case? What's Christians do? Not much. You don't plan on getting sick. You don't plan on having anything wrong in your family. But just in case, if you have to go beating on that door, you're not a stranger. You're a covenant person. He knows your name. You know, you've, he's, you've seen him be faithful before. This goes for young people. This goes for older people. It goes for single people and married people. It goes for people that are faithful attending church. But that don't mean you're close to him. That don't mean you're close to him. A lady brought her husband to my meeting in North Carolina, and, and she said, I brought my husband here to meet you, and he needs help with both of his knees. Well, I thought, well, it's funny, he's not saying a word to me. And he looked up right at me and said, I don't like you. <laughs> I said, I thought, oh, Lord. I said, well, I, I know you're probably here because of your wife. He said, you're damn right that's why I'm here because of my wife. I thought, oh, wow, this is going to be very, and this, we had about 1,000 people there. And they're all hearing this firsthand. And I thought, so what am I going to do with this one? Now, I had to hear. I couldn't call any of you because you weren't available. Come on, none of you were available. <laughs> all of you Toronto partners, where were you when I needed you? Where was my mother? Where was anybody? That's what life is. It finds you in those places, and you end up getting mad at somebody because they weren't there for you. You got to realize people are not always going to. Jesus came back, they fell asleep three times. Three times they couldn't pray for him. He came back three times and they fell asleep. What did he do? Did he quit? No, he said, I got to do this alone. He went and pulled on the Father. I said, Sir, your wife really wants you. I said, He said, I don't like you. I don't like the way you dress. I don't like the way you look. <laughs> All over the microphone in front of everybody. And I felt like saying, just be quiet about it, don't. <laughs> and he said, I, I don't know why I'm here, but she says you can help me. And he, and he said, what the heck, if you can help me, go ahead and help me and make my wife happy. <laughs> I, I just, you know, you have to really collect your flesh because you don't you want to hurt the man. You want to say something like, you know. Go stand at that traffic light. Go stand right in this intersection out there. <laughs> and you know you can't do that. So the Holy Spirit helps you restrain 
your natural temperament. And that's the anointing surface. Because so I was restraining myself, but I didn't know how much longer the holy ropes were going to last. Because <laughs> he just kept going. I said, sir, let's just not talk you and I. Let's, we can talk about that later. I said, but have you checked your knees since you've been up here? He said, well, she said, you have to pray for me. I said, just check them. He said, but aren't you going to pray for me? I said, after you check them, I'll pray for you. He said, what do you want? I said, run up and down on these steps. Just, I said, I can't do that. I said, well, just try. Just try. If you don't try, how are you going to know anything happened? So he ran up and down. He ran up and down. And he said, how the hell did I do this? <laughs> so he proved that I was damn right, number one, about one thing. And how the hell did he do that? I said, this was the miracle of Jesus, the miracle of the Holy Spirit. I said, it wasn't me. It wasn't my clothes. It was Holy Spirit touching you. And thank God you're married to the right woman. <laughs> he looked over at her, and I didn't know what was going on there because it wasn't, didn't seem to be too flowy, too nice. He said, yeah, well, you know. I said, no, you really ought to thank her. Because if it wasn't for her, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be getting this. Somebody really was used to get you into the presence. But when, you're, when you get in the presence, be smart enough to know, wow, I, I need more of that. And I wish we could put it in a jar and send it home with you. I wish we could put it in a needle and send it home with you. But what did the wise virgins, what did the wise virgins say to the foolish virgins? When the foolish virgins came and said, we want to go, but we're out of oil. Give us some of yours. What did the wise virgins say? We can't. This cost us a lot. Go get this costly oil yourself. And the foolish virgins, you know, they went to get the costly oil. While they were going to get the oil, the bridegroom cometh. They got back just in time. These were virgins. They had a lamp, and they had a desire, but they weren't prepared. They didn't think they'd need extra oil. And by the time they got back, the leader of the wedding came out and said, sorry, too late, no more room. Every chair filled, closed the door. And they, didn't, they don't get to go to the wedding feast. It's very, very important if you don't want to miss out. Not just on the need you have, but on everything that God has in front of you. Come on, put both hands up and say, there's a lot in front of me that I've never even believed in or dreamed that could happen. But God will pluck me out of obscurity. God has got a plan of supply, of favor. He has a, he has a plan to break every curse and free me from everything. Every bad memory, my childhood, every unclean thing that's happened to me. The power of the blood of Jesus is waiting to cleanse me and set me free and get me moving in another direction. Thank God for Jesus. I need him tonight. Come on, somebody give him a big, big shout. Come on. Come on, I want you to praise him tonight. Come on, I want you to praise him tonight. Come on, I mean, I want you to really, really, really praise him tonight. Just put your hands up a moment. We don't know how long it'll take before this war comes over into our space. It will. It'll either come by troops or by the economy, by the gas lines, food lines, by the government, by the evil empire, whoever you want to call it. We're living in these end time events. And God wants us to begin to figure this out, that we're going to need him for the smallest of things. We did a crusade in Hawaii. I was on the island of Maui doing a crusade. I ran out of toothpaste. So I said to my wife, I'm going to run down here to the drugstore and pick up some quick toothpaste. So I go to the, dr the big drugstore. Went in and I said, I can't find any toothpaste. He says, oh, we don't have any yet. He 
He said, you have to understand, we are an island. We depend on the mainland. And when the ships don't come in, we don't have anything in our store. And I thought, dear God, is this 2022? Or what is, what? How could you be a big drugstore? I couldn't, I just didn't believe it. I said, you mean you depend, on, yeah, we depend on ships. And if the ships don't get in for whatever reason, we don't have it. That supply chain, you don't know how many people. And recently when the fires hit there and burned out all the Lahaina, all that area, and you see people displaced, the girls that have been kidnapped by these, the people over in the Middle East, and you wonder what's happening to those girls. Well, I, I, I kind of think a little bit about it, but I'm not their father. How does a, a responsible mother or father go to bed tonight knowing how do you get that out of your head what could be happening there do you watch TV do you watch a good movie do you go to the spa and just go on the treadmill all night and get so exhausted till you fall? how do you deal with real life you need him you need him tonight he's the only answer for some things that we have no prescription for there's no medicine for that there's no surgery for that stuff. You can't find a wounded heart on an x-ray. You can't find a wounded spirit. If you cut somebody open, it's not there. It's invisible. Spirit has to meet spirit. Oh, that's so good. Come on, say spirit. Spirit has to meet spirit. That's the only answer. Otherwise, you're going to be looking for somebody like this lady with flesh on or like the lead usher here with flesh on. And they're going to just disappoint you. Or they may be able to pray and make you feel better. They pray for me, I feel better. But that prayer goes into the spirit realm. It's carried by an angel. It's carried by Holy Spirit. There's another dimension besides here. That's where Abraham's baby came from. He had no sperm. And she had no eggs. So where'd her baby come from? I, I, that's a general answer. Where, where that baby came from was that other dimension. Where'd all that food come from? If they had no food to feed 15, 20,000 people, when Jesus multiplied that, where'd it come from? Okay, it's here, but where'd it come from? Everything comes from somewhere. That's what Jesus taught us. So where'd all that food come from? came from another dimension. Another dimension. So you, every supply you need, every broken, every body part that you may need, the arms, the legs, the lungs, the spleens, all of that stuff is in another. It's not on the black market. Here it is. But if you begin to need him and he begins, once you begin to need him and you express that, and you get closer to what you are now. Number one, you got to admit that. You got to admit, and I love being around people that are closer than me because I can feel it. Like, wow, she was way closer than me. Well, I'm not jealous of that. I want to get close to her and pick up some of that stuff. Anything here you feel or see, if you get close enough, you can get some of that. Come on, say out loud, give me some of that. Well, about three of you said that, that's all, it's okay. <laughs> See, some people don't ever say that because they think they already got it. I'm telling you, there's storms on the way that make what's happened look like child's play. And need him. Need him. I was in a storm with Pat Robertson years ago in Pennsylvania, and I was by the stage, he's on the stage. And the lightning and the lightning bolts, I mean, it was bad. And people began to run. He said, everybody stay still. We're going to push this storm that way. Well, I wasn't like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't cynical. I was raised to believe. And I thought, here's what I thought. How's he going to do this? I, I'm going to, I mean, where's my, if I had a pen, I think, how is he going to do this? And I just stood back and I watched him just put his hands up. Well, how, how, how was he able to muzzle that? That's what he used the word muzzle. 
He said, we're going to muzzle this storm. And we just watched that thing just move away. And the place went ballistic, you know. But I walked away thinking, how huh, did he, did he really do that? Was that just a coincidence? Well, if you're hanging around coincidental people, they never grow in their faith. Because they never think things like that can take place. You got to believe that God can guide the hands of surgeons. Yes. Had a lady in Michigan, her name was Valerie, I believe it's Valerie. She had a cancerous tumor on her liver. She came to our meeting. I touched her. She fell under the power. She shook for over a half an hour. When she got up, she believed that she was healed. I know what I felt. And she went back to the doctors the next day, and he said, I'm sorry. I don't know what you're, you've been told, but I can still see the cancer connected to your liver. I still see it. Wow. We got to get in there and get it out. She said, but I'm healed. She said, I, I know what I felt on the floor. He said, I'm not doubting that. I'm just saying I see it right. And he brought her into the x-ray. There it is. Come on, let me get in there and get that thing out. So they put her under anesthesia, they opened her up, and the tumor was already disconnected. Wait a minute, the cells were all dead, and the tumor fell into the surgeon's hands. Now, she led that surgeon to Jesus. Come on, somebody, somebody help me. Come on, come on, somebody help me. Your faith will take you as far as you want it to. But you got to need them. You got to need them. One lady said to me, I, Bailey, I, I know you see miracles, but I need a big one. I said, let me check a minute. Let me check. He has a couple left. He's got a couple big ones left. She said, no, I mean, I need a really, really big one. Just a minute. She needs a really, really big one. He said, he has one just for you. What was she doing with her mouth, making it impossible? With her mouth, we're so used to running to the store, and they're out of your shoe. They're out of the half and half you need. They're out of something, and in your mind, you're so used to not receiving. And so, and then you go to God with something, you just find it hard to believe that he has that miracle for you. I'm standing here tonight, and I, I'm not saying this is easy to say this, but he does. And the problem isn't him, and the problem isn't the devil. It's that you're not choosing to get a little closer. Come on, say, just a little closer. Just a little closer to where you can begin to admit, I, I need you. I, I just need you. And a Baptist preacher came. He said, I'm only here. He scuffed on stage. The only reason I'm here is because I saw your ad in the paper. And I thought I might as well try you first. He said, but I have both of my carotid arteries are completely blocked. And I'd rather not have surgery on my neck and my carotid arteries. But he said, I thought I'd try you. He said, but I don't know. I want you to know I don't believe in this. He said, so I just, if, you th if you got something... You look like a little flashy to me. I don't like flashy people. I have so many people tell me they don't like me, but they come to me. I don't get it. I don't understand that. And I said, okay. And he said, I just want you to know I'm a Baptist. I don't, you know, this, I don't deal with this stuff. And I said, well, just come on over here. Come on over here, Mr. Baptist. Come on over here. And he said, this, is, this was Sunday night. He said, I'm scheduled for surgery on Wednesday morning. So if what you do doesn't work, now I'm going to go ahead and do what I probably should do anyhow. But I just thought when I saw you in the paper and saw what you advertised, I'm going to put this to bed once and for all. And I just, and I remember this night. I said, here's what I said underneath my breath. I said, Lord, knock him into yesterday. <laughs> Hit him so hard he won't even know what happened to him. And uh, he's smiling away. I'm smiling away. Well, I touched him. And man, he just, whew, I don't think anybody caught him. I think he landed on the stage, just hit the deck, and he, he's down there. He's just moaning and groaning. I thought, oh, I hope he's not hurt, you know. And he looked up at me. He said, what's going on? He said, what's, what's moving me? He said, what is this? I said, that's the Holy Ghost. He said, the Holy who? I said, the Holy, <laughs> the Holy Ghost. 
He said, the Holy Ghost. Here's what he said. Who's the Holy Ghost? You know? I said, well, you're feeling him right now. That's what you're feeling. And he's, he was afraid because he had never felt that in his church. Every church can't do everything. It's not a bad thing that this doesn't happen in every church. It's a bad thing if it never happens in you. It's a bad thing you have to go to heaven to find out that, you know, that all these things are true. So he gets up off there. They help him up, and he was, like, shaking. He said, am I going to be okay? I said, you're going to be fine. You know, he said, what about my carotid arteries? I said, well, go get them checked. He said, I'm scheduled for surgery. And most people, here's what most people do. This, I love this story because here's what most people don't do. And that's why they don't get healed, a lot of people. They do all that, and then they don't even find out if anything happened. They just go and have surgery anyhow. They just pick up their cane on the way out. They have the wheelchair and meet them in the van. They have all that medicine just waiting to go home. And after you've been under the power and shaking, you go home and just suck down all that medicine. Don't even try it. They don't even try to check for any improvement. If it's not all at once, it should be 10% at least or 15%. So he, 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 here's what he did. He went, he, went, he, was, he went ahead to go to surgery. It's Tuesday morning it was, yes, yeah, Sunday night. Tuesday morning he goes for surgery. They put a, gir- a gown on him. They put him on a gurney. They have him horizontal. And the anesthesiologist came out. She was getting ready to put the needle in his arm. You know, to give him anesthesia. He said, just a minute before you give me that anesthesia, he said, now this nurse don't know him. He said, I was in a meeting a couple nights ago. And she said, okay, sir, but I got to hurry and do this. No, no, I want you to hear me. I was in a meeting a couple nights ago, and this guy, that's who I am to a lot of people, this guy. (laughs) This guy touched me and knocked me and down. I felt something go all through me, and maybe I should get another uh, x-ray. She said, sir, I, that's not my job. My job is there's people behind you, people in front of you. We've got to get you in here. So we've got to go ahead and I'm going to put this in. You're going to begin to go unconscious. It's the anesthesia. He said, but I don't want to go unconscious. She said, sir, we can't get into this. Well, at that time, the surgeon came out. He heard this. He came out. He undone his mask, put his mask down. He said, what's the problem? He said, doctor, he said, I was in a meeting two nights ago. And this guy prayed for me. And he said, I mean, I felt something go all through me. I was on the ground. It scared me. And I don't know that I still have the problem. And the doctor says, well, sir, look, what are you going to do? He said, we're on the time frame here. What are you going to do? He said, I want an x-ray. We can't do that. Then I can't have the surgery. Oh, my gosh. They took him out of the rotation. We're going to take him back here, take a quick picture. We'll get you back in. I don't know what time you're going to get out of here. He said, that'll give me peace to have that picture. They took him out of the rotation, took him back in to take those pictures. Man, he ran out of that hospital. <laughs> he, he ran out of that hospital. Because he didn't have anything on either side. But had he not demanded for another x-ray, had he just assumed, well, I'm just, because you live in fear. You give too much power to people. You believe in facts more than you believe in the truth. The facts will always change, but the truth will never change. It's a fact that the tumor's there, but the truth is it was taken away. We don't live for facts. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. But what was the truth? A lot of facts about Kennedy, but there's a lot of truth. A lot of facts about 9-11, but then there's the truth. The people that were the first people there at 9-11, the first responders that were there came to my meeting, met with me afterwards. His company was called to clean up all the white powder. He was sent to my meeting to let me know, here's what I know. Here's the truth. And I said, well, that's, I don't know. I don't know white powder from red powder. I don't know what you're talking about, but hey, I'm glad you got that off your chest. See, we live by facts more than the truth. Tonight, for every one of you, the truth is you're healed. The truth is that you have more good ahead of you than bad. The truth is you have the power to save your whole family. 
The truth is you could end up pretty handsome and smart. Come on, somebody help me. Come on. But you've got to quit looking at things. That's a fact. That's a fact that tumor was there. That's a fact my checkbook says I'm minus $33. But the truth is I'm rich. If you ever want to move out of the facts into truth, move into faith. And quit living by what it looks like. Quit living by what it looks like. Live by what the word of God says. I had an old pastor friend in Miami. He's with the Lord now. He was in his late 90s, and he was best friends with Kenneth E. Hagan, and they'd go on all these cruises together. And I started going to that church for probably, I don't know, five, six years in a row. Beautiful church, wonderful people. But when I would go there, I'd always say, well, Pastor Stan, how you doing tonight? How you doing today? He'd say, I wish you would quit asking me how I'm doing and start asking me what does the word of God say? I didn't catch on to that. I wasn't used to talking like that. So I saw him the next time. Hey, Pastor Stan, how, how you doing today? I told you, quit asking me how I'm doing and tell me what the Word of God says. See, it takes you a while to think right, talk right, act right. You're not going to do that overnight. But if you're tired of the way things are, you've got to begin somewhere. So maybe after a whole year, I, don't, I have more to do than just think about this man telling me how to straighten up how I talked to him. But pretty soon I got it. I don't know when it was, a year, seven months, and the plane was landing at Miami Airport, and I thought, I'm going to see Pastor Stan. Uh Uh-oh, I'm not going to ask him how he's doing. I am not. (laughs) So I I, I went over to him. I said, Pastor Stan, here's what the Word of God says about you. He said, now you're talking. Now you're talking. (laughs) You're the redeemed. Come on, you're the blessed. You're the highly favored. You're the healed. You're the delivered. Oh, and you're the mighty, mighty anointed. He'd say, man, now it's going to be a good night now, you know. (laughs) See, he had crossed over that change. He didn't care about what you thought about him anymore. He now cares, what does the master think about me? Put your hands up all over the place tonight. It's going to be a great night. We're going to see a lot of miracles tonight. But I want you to learn the lesson tonight. I need him. Boy, if you can get that tonight, you can change the rest of your life just on a simple, simple phrase. I, I love you because I need you. I love you because I, need, I really need you. When you get older, there's people that can't even tie their shoes on their own. So we make light of it. What do you mean you need God to tie your shoes? Well, you're not old enough yet. I need God to get me through the kitchen. I need God to... See, God may not want you to be dependent on a caregiver. He he may want you to get stronger as you get older. He can heal your mind tonight. He can rearrange DNA. He can change diagnosis. I mean, he can change... I know a preacher, he's actually from up in Canada here. God changed his fingerprints changed his very fingerprints he was a convict printed sentenced to, and he got out and couldn't get a job and God changed his prints don't you tell God when he says nothing's impossible he means nothing is impossible but you got to cultivate that Have you ever say the word cultivate you got to cultivate that you got to break open the soil It's what you do every day that will determine your destiny. It's not what you do once in a while. It's those holy habits that are revolutionary. I mean, you can lose the weight. I mean, you can. I've seen a girl that came into our meeting. She was five foot, desired to be five five. Brought a tape measure and her dad with her to make sure that she measured it right. I mean, that really frustrated me because I thought that was so cosmetic in a service where there were so many serious people. And she came up on stage, and she was just a cute little girl. I don't know, cute. I I mean, little. I guess she was probably 17 or 18. I don't know. I I, want to be 5'5". I said, oh, wow, let's do it. You know, I was just, let's pray. And then the dad came up. He said, I brought my tape measure. 
And the dad's standing right here, and like the dad was saying with his body language, this better work, this better work. And uh, so we put the table, I said, let me pray, and I pray she went under the power. And as she was laying on the floor, she said, Daddy, Daddy, I feel something happening to my legs. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. And I said, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's amazing. I'm as much a spectator as I am participating in this. That's what I love about this. Now, you think I come to Toronto just for you? Come on, somebody. <laughs> I come here to get impressed with God. And so she's down there, and she's, so they brought her up, and, and, and she, and Daddy, measure me. So they stuck the measure up. She was five feet. He goes up. He goes, baby, five, five, one. Baby, five, two. Daddy, daddy. Five, three. I mean, stopped. And she said, ah. And she was disappointed. Stopped. And she said, ah. And she was disappointed. Now watch this. She said, ah, I, I, I want five, five. I said, no, all I have in me is 5'4". That's all I have. That's all I have. I don't have any more. I said, if you can find another church here in Fort Myers that can give you that extra inch, go for it. I said, I've never seen anybody grow that much in my life. I'm going to practice that on me. Come on, somebody, you know. And she said, I want 5'5". Five, five. And the dad said, Connie, you got your, Connie, look at you. I said, you go use your own faith now. See, if you get encouraged here, there's no telling what you may attempt to do. If you, if you take this serious, you don't have to get mad at me. I, I don't think I'm that, uh, nothing. I, You're going to have to really begin to be excited enough about this to at least try it. Wouldn't you be shocked if you tried something and it worked? How many think that'd be pretty cool? You know, so, so I had no trouble. I had no trouble saying to her, just go home and believe God for the other inch. You know, and she really wasn't, she left her like just whining. I, I thought, whoever marries that girl's going to be in trouble, I'll tell you that right now. But, but the dad was saying, come on, he was all excited. Because she just fell an inch short of her desired goal. God don't want anybody doing it all for you. You know, when I was a young boy, my grandfather would take me fishing, and he'd throw the line out in there and show me how to cast it. And then he'd wait till we got a big fish on, that, on the line. Then he'd hand me the pole. He said, I want you to, I want you to know what this feels like. I said, he said, you feel that, boy? I said, I feel that. He said, do you feel that vibration? I said, I feel that. He said, well, a, a, a dead branch won't give you that. A dead branch will give you weight, but a fish will give you vibration. And I thought, oh, my God, you know. He said, I want you to learn the difference because you'll be catching some branches, too, in your life, you know. But, you know. And he'd let me bring the fish in. He caught it. When I went home to my grandmother, I said, I caught it. Come on, somebody, you know. <laughs> I think they both knew who caught the fish. But see, that's what God does. He gets you started on this. He wants you to get involved in it and feel the vibration in a meeting. Feel the vibration of a testimony. You know, and, and, and take a crack at this. If it doesn't work, you practice and you practice. You didn't become a good cursor and swear until you did it a lot. Come on, you didn't become good at hating until you did it enough. You didn't become prejudiced overnight. You rehearsed wrong to become faithfully wrong about a lot of things. And the reason your pain is still there is because you think about your pain. And, and that's, how that, that's how that happens. Practice makes perfect in, in any dimension. But God wants you to practice his presence, his faithfulness, and needing him. Needing him. Oh. I'll tell you what, I just, I just cut, last week, I, you know, our house, we're going some construction on inside the house, and I have a phone finder. I couldn't find my phone anywhere. My wife wasn't home, and she's usually my second finder, you know. <laughs> you left it in the living room, you left it here, you left it there. So there's nobody home, and I could not find my phone. And I'm thinking, I got to find my phone. So I thought, well, I'll put the phone finder on. And the phone finder wasn't working. 
And I thought, this is crazy. Here's what the Holy Spirit said. Just do what you tell people to do. Do what you tell people to do. Well, what do you mean what I do what I tell people to do? Well, you need me to find your phone. Well, I don't want to tell people I need you to find my phone. He said, it'll help somebody. I said, that's crazy. That's crazy. I said, Lord, I'll, I'll look. He said, well, go ahead and look. Go ahead and look. Half hour, 40 minutes, and I had an appointment. So I came back. I said, you know I'm going to be late. You just know I'm going to be late. So I need you. Oh, you need me. Oh, you need me. Did you hear that, angels? Galaxy, did you hear that? He needs me to find his phone. Because I really needed to get to that phone. And I said, Lord, I, I need you. And as I was saying it, now watch this. As I was saying it, I saw a flash out of my eye. It was within, almost within my reach. You hear him spending all this time to try and find the phone. You say, well, that's just coincidence. This guy don't believe in that coincidence. And I say, you know, I need you for this. I need you for the services. And I need you to find a phone that's probably 10 yards away from me. Need him tonight. Need him tonight. Let those words come out of your mouth. Say it with me. I need you, Lord. If I've ever needed you, Lord, I need you now. More in my life than ever before. If you're trying to get a job and nobody wants to give you a break, I need you, Lord. You know, if you're complaining about your car and you tell everybody else you need the Lord, but you don't tell the Lord you need the Lord. You tell people at church, boy, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have the Lord. You tell everybody in church, I don't know what people do that don't have Jesus. Yet you yourself don't go to him and say, I need you. I'm telling you what will open up the galaxies for you. It will split the heavens, part the waters. God's waiting to come through for you at a level you've never seen it before. Come on, let's give him a shout tonight. Come on, let's give him a shout. No, 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 a shout. Come on. How many want to do that anointing service in January? <laughs> and there's some people, I'm telling this is the truth, in Puerto Rico, where some people, whenever I'd come down, and they, there was guys with bowls all around me, and I'd touch some people, and I could sense they really need deliverance. So then I'd dump my whole hand in there. And I'd just slap my hand right on there. It went in their hair and down their face onto their blouse. And they'd get set free. This isn't going to be some little dabble, do you, anointing service. We're not going to just give them some oil, give him some oil. No, we're, going to, we're going to dunk you in the oil that night. You better, you better bring a towel and you better bring a change of clothes or wear the clothes that you want to be anointed in. And I told the people, I said, well, if I was you, I've done this, save the garments that you come to this, save them. Save these garments. Why did, they, why did they fight over the clothes of Jesus? The presence. The presence was in those garments. It wasn't just, it, it was bloody. It had an odor of death. But they fought over these garments because the presence of the master was still in the clothes. Presence transfers. Presence transfers. Hey, you know, why I have your attention? How many, do I have your attention? Yeah. Let's do an offering. Well, you, got, you lost me real quick. I don't know what happened. It's like the bottom fell out, right? David, Pastor David, tell the precious people how they can help us with the offering tonight. All right, if you do not have an offering envelope, put your hand up really high right now, and the ushers will come back and give you an offering envelope. And while they're doing that, make your checks payable to SOC for Selwyn Outreach Center. It's right up on the overhead here. Checks payable to SOC. Again, print real clearly all the information that needs to go on those checks. If you want to give using debit card, uh, Cheryl will be back out in the lobby there. Uh, and you can go back there and use your debit card to give tonight. And the rest of you, you can uh, put the, uh, if we take care of the checks, the next thing we want to do is credit cards. So 
put all the information on the, the envelopes. Again, all the details, make sure it's clear, uh, expiry date, all that stuff with the credit cards. We want to make sure you, you get an income tax receipt at the end of the year. So if you do all that and have it nice and clean and clear on those checks and uh, visa on numbers or credit card numbers on the envelopes. And again, a debit machine at the back for those that want to donate via the debit machine. And so ushers, give me a few moments before we take up the offering. And if you remain seated while we do this, that would be great. So go ahead, Duncan. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I will see of the goodness of God Okay, ushers, go ahead and pick up the offering envelope. I love your voice You have led me through the fire In the darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God All my life, all my life, you have been so, so, so good. Every breath. every breath that I am in. 
Well, hello, folks. It's Pastor Dave just jumping in here again tonight. I trust you're enjoying the teaching that Pastor Billy has shared so far. We're going to go into ministry time. But we thank God for all of you, the thousands that are watching on live streaming and even on the replay. I trust you'll be blessed by tonight's service and the, the word that's coming forward and the miracles that take place tonight. And we thank you for your support, your financial support. And if you want to give online security, go to touchingtoronto.com. You can do that 24-7. But at the same time, we love that people are backing us up in prayer. So we appreciate each and every one of you. And tonight, as Pastor Billy continues in the ministry, the ministry of the Holy Ghost tonight, receive. If he calls us something, you receive what he has for you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let's get back into the service. Where? Right over here? Yeah, and this happened last night. Um, you uh, prayed for me, and it felt like I had electric shocks going through my body. Wow. And uh, it was um, a trauma from early childhood, and the Lord healed it. Oh, my God, did yeah. you hear that? Thank you. Thank you. Where, where do you go to church? Richmond Hill Pentecostal. Uh -huh. Tell somebody about this. I tell you too. <laughs> Why, who's that? Well, they're my friends. Uh, isn't that amazing? For some, for, for to go way back there and hit that. And I was actually encouraged by someone who saw me and came up and told me they had experienced a, a similar type of thing in one of your meetings. Oh, my. And it was a generational healing. So, I and I that. wasn't looking for it, and I didn't know. I have to you say that. You know the Holy Spirit. That's what you know. She'll remember that, I'll tell you that. Wow. Hold on to her head. Hold on to her head. Don't let her get hurt. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. It's all right. It's all right. What you, you know... When I, when I see somebody driving a car, listen to me, that I would never buy, but I like that car for them. I tell you not get jealous. When something happens like this and maybe that's not you to do that, I'm enjoying that for her. She's free to do that. You don't know where God's taking you. You don't know who you'll be if you, if you yield to him in the coming days and months. You don't know. How much more verbal, vocal you could be. Yes, what happened to you? This was last night? Yes. What happened? Uh, you called up herniated disc. Yes. And what happened to her happened to me. What? I fell under the power and I felt peace and healing in my back. But then the Lord impressed upon me, this is because you were rejected by your father. And wow. it's being manifested as a generational pattern and curse and it's being healed now. So. Wow. I'm wow. so grateful. So I thank the Lord with my offering, and I felt compelled to come back and testify and to thank him and thank to say, you, I you. need him. I need him. I need him more than ever. So thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And when thank I, you. I want to hear you say, you what? You need him. You what? I need him. Say it again. I need One more time. I need him. It's amazing. Amazing. Who else can take that out of you? The emotional, the spiritual, the invisible that doesn't show up. You don't have to marry five people to try and get someone to love it out of you. You don't have to go beyond your morals. You can he ask him, he'll come in and deliver you and heal you. I love it. Thank you so much. What's your name? Tony. Tony. Tony with an I. Tony who? Tony with an I. Tony with an I. Okay. <laughs> Come on, give God a shout. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Yes, quickly, ma'am. Pastor Burke, I had no idea it was me you were calling last night. You're going, you, you. And I'm going, who? Because I wasn't thinking of physical healing, right? You called me. You touched me. And I went back, and I just felt like a tingling all over and like a cleansing was happening inside of me. Wow. And I felt like I was recalibrating. Recalibrating. Oh, th that's how it ha felt. 
I knew something shifted. And so I, afterwards I'm going, oh, did it? You my kn- I knew something shifted. So I thought, was it my knees? Because I kept complaining I wanted my knees healed, but I didn't ask for anything. I go, no, it's not that. I went home. I was joyous, happy, everything. This morning I got up. I posted on Facebook, just as you said. All before, I, I was kind of shy with all my friends on Facebook. And am I going to tell them everything? I, I posted the lessons you taught us last night. And I told them what happened to me. I said I had my heart, uh, what do you call it, a regular heartbeat left. I had tinnitus gone. I said, guys, you got to come and check it out. So I, and I told my girlfriend, I was on doing some work with her on the phone today. I told her about you. She started laughing at me. And I go, you laugh all you want. You've always laughed at me. And then you followed me. I said, here we go again. So I just get this courage and this strength that I can now do anything. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. That's wonderful. It has to take you past public opinion. You got to not be ashamed. It may not be for them. It has to be for you. What are you doing? Putting seed on them. What kind of seed? Incorruptible seed. Come on, say the word of God is incorruptible that's why we need to tell the story even though they may go yeah 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 it'll go down in there and what and it begins to just go through them and it will what it will touch all of the corruption that's in them and you can put that in people it's amazing you need to think of what the word of your testimony is going to do instead of you thinking about you so much that's amazing. Great. Great. Where do you go to church? Because I got in, in Ajax. You're too happy. You're just church, too happy. The church of God in Ajax. I'm going to take this, some of this out of you. you got too much. I'm going to take this out and put no that in way. some of those I got people. a big community in Toronto. I got a big community in Toronto and a lot of like, like not that big, but I mean the some business owners like. Uh-huh entrepreneurs know me and I kept thinking oh my god they're going to think I'm over spiritual this year I better be careful what I say I thought, forget it I finally said I don't care what anybody thinks that's it but I do isn't care. that a great age to get to that is a great age to get to yes yes what happened to you I um I couldn't come last night because I was so exhausted. I couldn't drive. My sister came and a friend came. I was so tired. I thought, okay, I'll turn Billy Burke on. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to be sleeping through the meeting. I took my mom to the TV in the long-term care home. And just as the meeting went on, I just got more and more built up, encouraged, and strengthened. You were it watching an, it online. Yes. And I just want to speak to the fact that I was sitting here tonight. I thought, this is as real. Last night was as real. I felt like I was here as being here today. It's better. I mean, come to come. Like be here, but I just, it was amazing, and I was so, people could hear my voice, my sister could hear my voice, I was strong, I was strengthened, wow. we were here tonight, we came tonight, and uh, to be here in person, we wanted to be here in person, but I just, I was, I can't describe how exhausted and tired I was, I was falling asleep during supper, I was falling asleep when I was with my mom, I was just falling asleep during phone calls, and I just got completely built up and encouraged, and that was online, right? It's amazing. It's just you you teach, you build our faith, you um, take our, I say to people, he takes your drop and he adds his faith and agreement. It's just the whole, it's the whole thing that happens here is amazing. Isn't that a good analogy? That's very good. Yeah. My sister first met you and she talked about you and she said he teaches, he teaches. Isn't You're talking he teaches? too much now. You're talking too much. <laughs> yes. So my friend isn't here, but last night she was sitting in the middle here. You were helping a guy over here get his ears open. Her ear popped open. She only had 20% hearing, and now it's open. And she's a lady from Wiscagnish. And you from where? Wiscagnish. Well, I mean, up at the north. The Cree. Cree. That's where we were. Yeah. Wiscagnish. So How I many ever been to, to Wiscagnish? Two. <laughs> I'm three. It's way up there. You have to sign a, a register before you cross over in case you don't come out. You, that's the tundra, right? You cross the tundra? Whatever's that up there. It's so cold. Oh, we were up there with Chief Billy Diamond at the, at the Cree Indian Reservation. We had a thousand Indians for three nights in a row. 
It was amazing. It was amazing. And that's where she was from. Yeah. I also have a testimony. It's been three months since I was here in this place, and God shook me for three minutes and delivered me from depression, pain, anxiety. It was huge. It was huge. Glory. All my life you've been faithful. Come on, everybody. All my life. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath. With every breath that I am able. Come on, I will sing. Oh, I will sing of the, of the goodness, goodness of God. All my life. Come on. And all my So Jesus set me free from that kind of bondage. I had so much peace in my mind. All those voices stopped. I think it's but I, um, I spend time with Jesus, listening to him. And a couple Thank weeks you. after that, um, there's a picture that he, Jesus shows me quite often, and it's. Um, for many years, he's shown me that he's like a horse whisperer with me. Yes, good. He's healing me. Uh -huh. He's training me, and he's got me on a lead. Uh -huh. And I received this freedom um, from the deliverance. And then a couple weeks after, he took the lead off of me and gave me that freedom as well. Beautiful. And I feel like he's actually calling me. Beautiful. Um, and it's only once you get that freedom... Like in the Old Testament, if they had I, a I slave. I got people to pray for here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's powerful. Thank you. Beautiful. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Give him a mighty, mighty praise. Come on. Come on. All my life you've been saved. Come on, everybody. All my life. All my life. There's a mighty power here. Come on, there's a work of God here. This mighty power of the Holy Ghost on this. Come on, I will sing, I will sing of the goodness. I will sing of the goodness. The Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. That power. The Holy Ghost on me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That might be the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on. That might be the power. Come on, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Of the goodness.
Let those people there. I will say all their prayers. Of the good. Come on, that mighty power. Your goodness is running out. Power, Holy Ghost. Running out to me. Let him know that power is on him, I said. Oh, that by the Holy Ghost. Oh. Your goodness is running out. It's running oh, the power, out. That power. All oh, that power, Holy Ghost. Your goodness is running out. That mighty touch. Oh. Sing it, sing it. Your goodness is running out. Power. Come on, all my life. All my life, Power you have God. been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. I will sing. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life, you have been Of the goodness. Of the goodness of God. Oh, that mighty Holy Ghost. It's gone, it's gone. All my life. Come on, big guy, come on. Watch my back here. You there, go. All my life, you have been so, so good. Come on, come on, come on. Every breath that I am able. Come on, I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. That mighty power of the Holy Ghost. Your goodness is running after. It's running oh, the power. Oh, the power. Your goodness is power. running after. Power. It's running after me. Power. With my life laid down. Woo! I give you oh, power. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. That mighty power. With my life laid down and surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running out. Can you walk? Can you walk? Just walk. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so. You have to hold on to somebody. Come on, I will sing. Come on, come on. What's wrong? What's wrong? What kind of cancer? Put your hand up. It's gonna go. It's gonna go. It's what? Where do you live? Come on, I will sing. Come on! Of the goodness of God. All my life you have been free. He touched me. Come on, everybody. Oh, oh he, he touched me. And all oh, the joy. And all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Come on, somebody. Something happened. Something happened. Now I know. And now I know. He, he touched me. And Is this the camera for the uh, streaming? Uh, I'm sorry you couldn't be here tonight. What a night this has been. Next month we'll be back here at this same facility in November. 
go to touchingtoronto.com. It's right on the website there. And you'll be able to know exactly the time. But get into one of these meetings. And if you heard, in January, we're planning a meeting here in Toronto where we use the oil and we're going to touch everybody. If it takes all night, I want you to be in that meeting as well. If you want to make a donation, if you have a gift you want to give, you couldn't be here. If you go to that Touching Toronto, you can find out exactly how to do it. We would appreciate your gift in this mission of mercy to a great city in a great time. I want to see you next time, okay? Amen. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. I'm excited about this. This is going to be a great testimony. You're persistent. Perseverance pays off. But I want you to change your pillows. I don't like the pillows you're using. What kind of pillows are you using? Uh, pillow? I don't know. Whatever no, one at I home, grab. At home, at home, at home. Oh, pillows. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I'm not a pillow manufacturing guy. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't want you to use regular pillows. Okay. What do I need? What do Jacob we... slept on a pile of rocks. Right. And the visitation came. Right. So I want you to get something that would be more for a living room. Yeah. Or more for a chair. Yeah. I want you to just put something underneath your head. Something's going to happen from the head down. Come on, somebody give God a shout. <laughs> What's going on, Becky? Sorry? Talk to me. Uh, my, our name is Alan. I just want to grow in the gift of healing and uh, creating a miracle. Put your hands on. Where's the miracle you need? What do you need? Not for myself. I uh, just pray for people in the streets. Touch the man here. Lord Jesus, touch him. Let your spirit move through him with an unhindered flow. Give him his own UH, UFH channel. UHF, unhindered flow. Amen. Going through this man. An unhindered flow. Oh, it's the power. Thank you, Lord. By the Holy Ghost, we thank you. Come on, sir. What is this? Um, I have so many problems right now because some evil attacks and things like that in my life. I also stand up for my wife that has some problems in the kidneys. So, you know. And my sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, come on, every hand up. Every hand up. Come on. Worship him with me. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. I need your voice tonight. Come on. Oh, that's the way you do it. Come on, the glory's falling. He's going to feel you. He's going to touch you. He's going to remove any guilt, any blame. It will not stay on you. It will fertilize your life if you let it. It'll make you better people, a better passion, and a deeper purpose. Come on, do it again, Duncan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty Holy, oh, there's power. There's power of the Holy Ghost. There's mighty power of the Holy Ghost. That 
sanctifies the whole house. Oh, the power here. Get her, get her, get her. Come on, hallelujah. 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 Oh, this power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going up on the stage. I'm going up on the stage. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Bring her up on stage. Bring her up on stage. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we got to give it to him, everybody. We need. What is this that we feel here? What is this? It's the greatest thing you can have on this planet, that presence. That mighty presence of the Holy Spirit. We just thank that mighty presence. Wow, wow, wow. By the Holy Ghost. There's somebody who has a hairline crack in your pelvis. It's been, it's been painting. Who is this? You're being healed right now. A hairline crack in the pelvis. Is that you? Who is that? In the, it, you don't even know that's what it is. That's what's causing your pain. In, in the pelvis. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. That's why you have that pain right around you. Who is it? Right here. There's somebody here. It's, the person is here. If she's here, it's you. Just put your hands up. Somebody get behind her. Get behind her. The power's on her. Here comes a power, lady. Here comes a power. Lady, let it go. Let it go. She's afraid. Let it go. She's holding on. By the Holy Ghost, we give God. Oh, there it is, lady. Wow. We give you praise, dear Jesus. COPD's being healed. Somebody with COPD. COPD, where are you? COPD. Get up here. Hurry, hurry. Up on the stage. Come on, hurry. We're closing up here. This is a horrible disease. Yeah, I am a kind of a COPD. I feel cough, breathing. Gone, 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 gone. Come on, lady, hurry, hurry. No more. No more, no more, no more, no more, no more. Anybody else? COPD quickly. We thank you, dear Jesus. We thank you, dear Jesus. Somebody with a hernia disappearing. There's a guy here. Hernia, it's leaving. It's leaving your leg. It's leaving your leg. Who are you? 
Just put your hand down there. Nobody will say anything. It's shrinking. Who are you? I'm waiting. You, it's leaving? Huh? I said it's leaving. Yes. Um, yeah. I think so. He thinks so. That's yeah. close enough. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's it at? Right here? How long you had it there? This one's leaving. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. You got to believe it. I believe, yes. The mighty power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, hallelujah. 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 Just without the keyboard, just our voices. Just little lower, little softer, little softer. Beautiful. Just with your hands up in the air tonight. I believe the message of the evening. I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you. Mm. I need you. I don't got to go to church. You need him. You need him. I don't need this, but you need him. And you can't separate him from some church. There's got to be some church that would suit you. Maybe you've outgrown where you are. Maybe you need a different place. But don't give up on the body of Christ. Don't give up on the church. It's a place of contact with other believers. A community of faith. No hurry, but you need to do that. You need to do that. Come on, your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. If you're here tonight, I want to pray with you especially for that cleansing prayer. You haven't been living right. You've been away from God. And you're feeling that pull, that draw. Getting the healer on the inside of you goes a long way to your healing yourself. It makes you whole. He knows you can't do it by yourself because you need him. He knows you're still going to make mistakes. That's why you need him. Tonight he wants you to remember the cross. He said in his own words, remember me. That's what he said. Who can I pray for here tonight? that needs that cleansing stream. Raise your hand. If that's you, just raise your hand. Wonderful. So many tonight. So many. Say this prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus, I don't know why I drifted away, but I have. Other things have taken place ahead of you. And that's my bad. Forgive me tonight. Get the right protocol in my mind and in my life. I need the Lord. If he's first, so many things can fall in place. He wishes above all things that I would be in health and prosper as my soul. As my soul. As my soul prospers. The inner man first. Oh, tonight I love him. I'm grateful. 
that I can still be here and call on you and believe for the future that you have for me. So much has happened that I don't understand. That's why I have to live by faith. I'm not going to criticize what I don't understand. I can only believe what I know. What I don't know, I have to trust. I can only believe for what I know. What I don't know, I have to trust. And I will trust you. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him a big, big shout. Come on. Come on. I'm going to pause here just for a minute before we close. There's some people being healed. I want to give you an opportunity to tell me what's happening. Not that you need prayer, but your eyes are better, you're hearing better. Maybe there's another, whatever you're hearing, there's something happening here that I need to hear. Who is this? Do you feel him, do you feel it's going, him, him going, moving all through this, her body? Yes. You're, you, you're not sick anymore. Beautiful. Anybody else? Quickly. That's what? He's moving through you. Your whole body. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Your head and face. Beautiful. Yes, sir. What? You feel free. That's wonderful. Yes, ma'am. You feel heat. Oh, feel the heat. I love it. Yes. You feel what? He said he feels something. Don't do that. Don't say, I feel something. Say, I feel someone. I feel somebody. Come on, say, I feel the Lord. Moving through me. Yes, right here. Electricity. I'm going to come stand by you, sweetheart. I'll tell you that. Where? Right here. You had a pain in your shoulder when you came. It's what? 80% gone. 80% gone. I love it. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? Where's she at? She, okay, we'll pray for those in the hospital before I go. But I'm, right now I want you to feel, deal with the people that are here. Yes, ma'am. You can do what? In your hand. Your fingers is gone. Beautiful. Yes? In August you came and your legs were healed in Peterborough. And tonight you feel feeling the heat. I love this heat. How many love the heat in November, October, November? Yes. Oh, lady, we'll, get, we'll grow millions of people if that's true. Her, her veins are disappearing. Her veins. Varicose veins leaving. Thank you, Lord. Wow. You feeling moving on that side? On my leg. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. I felt this electricity go through me. Yes. They said that my heart is only beating at 27%. I've been coming here month after month. That, that's not true. I believe in the healing power of God. Amen. Amen. Anybody, quickly, quickly. Right here. Yeah. What happened? Come on. Come on. Days of Elijah. Get ready. Get ready. Come on, give God a big shout. Who else? Quickly, we're coming to a close. Anybody else? What's gone? Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Right here, sir. Oh. Where are you two from? 
Where are you two from? You go to church there anywhere? New creation. Your pastor is blessed to have you. You're a gift to that church. Come and help us here. We'll put you to work, okay? Come and help us, both of you. Yes. You what? Standing on a torn meniscus. A torn meniscus. But I'm still lost. That's the center kneecap here. Yeah. How'd you do that? I had bunionectomy surgeries that failed. Is it hurting now? It's gone. Oh. Wow. I'm standing, but I still feel lost. It's what? I still feel lost. You feel lost. Okay. Pray. We'll pray. We'll pray. Wow. I'm waiting. Just raise your hand quick because we're going to close. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Your heart murmur's gone. Wow. Wow. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Tonight we go. We see you next month. David, what's the dates on that? November 26th and 27th, I believe. TouchingToronto.com. All the information is there. And then, and then December, off. How many want me to take off at least a month? Come on. January what? <laughs> Dress properly. I'm not gonna, I'm not buying anybody new clothes, so you ruined my blouse. You were warned. You were warned. We're gonna close out with this song, These Are the Days of Elijah. How many know the song? These are the days. Are you ready to go? You gotta make some noise, okay? You ready? Here we go. And these are the days of Elijah. Come on, they are declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days. Of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Come on, everybody! And though these are days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are a voice in the desert crying. Here we go! of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. Come on, sing it! And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. These are the days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in the God like Jehovah. Out of Zion till salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah. Come on. There's no God like Jehovah. Come on. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes. Yeah. Riding on the clouds. Shining like the sun. At the trumpet call. No God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Come on. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like Jehovah.
shout. Now, you know what? Rehearse this. And what's the word you're going to speak all this week? Before you try and figure it out and assume the answer is not there. And start crying because you feel so alone. Elijah said, I'm the only one left. And God said, excuse me, you can't count. I have over 7,000 people that haven't bowed their knee. You feel alone, but you're not. He's with you. He's with you. His prayers are with you. He has people. You're, he's putting you on people's hearts. Don't go giving me that I'm all alone. You're not. I don't have a church. Make Touching Toronto your church until you get a church. How about that? Just check in here. Check in here and we'll cover you as a covering until God leads you to that right place. Amen. What two great nights. Wow. Oh, I love you. I love you. Love you. Come here. This is the lady in his prayer. Come on. By the Holy Spirit, we thank you, dear Jesus. We thank you, dear Jesus. Touch these girls. Calm the storm in them. Become their prince of peace. Release a cleansing tide of Calvary. The cleansing tide of Calvary. Be loosed. Oh, there's the power right there. There's the power. There's the power. There's the power. I said there's the power. Wow. That is healing right there. We couldn't have closed till we did that. I would be very sensitive leaving here tonight. What you do, what you think, what you watch, what you listen to. Protect this. This doesn't have to dispensate. This doesn't have to go away, dissipate. This doesn't have to. You can nurture this. You can feed the fire. I mean, I have to go get refilled. You took it all out of me. I came full. I'm leaving empty. It's how you're supposed to do it. I guess we're going to close with one more song, the Lord's Prayer. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, then you're dismissed, okay? And then we'll see you next month. Come on, Duncan. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And But deliver us from evil. For have, have Gary O'Brien join him. Have. Is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom. Come on. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Those of you that have prayed the cleansing prayer tonight to receive Christ, rededicate your life, go back with uh, Anetta. She's go back to the back corner. We have something we want to give you. We want to see you blessed and carry on in your mission and carry on with your walk with God. God bless you. Come back next month. Call five others. Bring them with you. 
Check out the product table. I believe there's new product out there tonight. Drive carefully. God bless you. And we'll see you again next month right back here.